Greetings, friends. Today, we continue our journey through the amazing book, The Great Controversy, which outlines the history of God working through His faithful people through centuries of darkness on down to the very end of time. But this is far more than just history. Through these pages, we see God's marvelous leading through the most difficult of circumstances. We see the power and trustworthiness of His Word, and we are encouraged knowing that as we read in Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, the same Jesus is with us today, guiding us individually and as a church. He will be with us to the very end of time. We're now in chapter 12, titled The French Reformation. Previously, we saw how God worked in a tremendous way at the protest of Spires and through the confession at Augsburg. This marked a wonderful triumph for the Reformation in Germany. Nevertheless, it was followed by tremendous bloodshed as thousands sealed their testimony with their blood as the Roman Church persecuted Christ's faithful followers. Dark days also came to the followers in Switzerland. The persecution of those who desired to receive the truth gave rise to a, a civil war where Zwingli and many other believers were killed. Rome was triumphant, we are told, but he whose counsels are from everlasting had not forsaken his cause or his people. In other lands, he had raised up laborers to carry forward the reform. Even before the world knew about Martin Luther, light was beginning to dawn in the country of France. A distinguished professor at the University of Paris, Jacques Lefebvre, had been studying the scriptures a devoted Catholic. He was in the university library researching the lives of the church's saints when he came across a Bible. Thinking it might help in his research, he began reading. However, instead of finding information on the so-called saints, he instead found the Lord Jesus Christ and the pure doctrine which had been hidden for centuries. He was convinced of the excellence and beauty of the scriptures. They seemed to me to give off a perfume whose sweetness was beyond all compare. Beside them, all human studies are a fog and shadow. Lefebvre was convinced that the greatest need of his time was a return to the scriptures, and he resolved to earnestly study and teach them to his students. He later translated the New Testament into French which was published at the very time Luther's German Bible was coming off the press in Wittenberg. One of Lefebvre's students, William Farrell, became a strong voice for the Reformation in France. Much like the Apostle Paul, Farrell came from a pious family and ardently supported the established church. A devoted Romanist, he burned with zeal to destroy all who should dare to oppose the church, saying, I would gnash my teeth like a furious wolf when I heard anyone speaking against the Pope. He, like his mentor Lefebvre, had been faithful in the adoration of saints, worshiping at shrines, and doing acts of penance. None of these practices, however, brought him the peace for which he longed. As Pharaoh listened to his mentor explain salvation by grace, and that it is only Christ who can open the gates of heaven and shut the gates of hell, he felt tremendous relief and joyfully accepted the truth. Just like the Apostle Paul, Pharaoh, once a persecutor, became zealous in the cause of Christ and began publicly proclaiming the gospel. Soon others joined him, including a dignitary of the church, the Bishop of Mio, who worked diligently to instruct clergy and the people in his diocese in the Word of God. 
He did all he could to spread Lefebvre's translation of the New Testament far and wide, and soon even the peasants of Mio had copies of the sacred book. The light of God's word spread quickly, and every day the number of converts increased. Roman church leaders became alarmed. Persecution kindled in France, and many followers of the Reformation were burned at the stake. Sadly, when the Bishop of Mio was forced to choose between the fire and recantation, he accepted the easier path. But notwithstanding the leader's fall, his flock remained steadfast. Many witnessed for the truth amid the flames. By their courage and fidelity, they spoke to thousands who had never before heard their testimony. Persecution could not stop the spread of God's truth. It only fanned the flames of devotion and faithfulness to His Word. Friends, are we as faithful to God's Word today? Do we spend time with our Bibles each day listening to God's voice, instructing, comforting, encouraging, directing us? Would we be willing to lay our life on the line rather than compromise His truth? He is calling us today, saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I invite you to pray with me just now. Father in heaven, thank you for the faithful sentinels of the past, people who, when hearing the Word of God, understood its ring of truth. They stood firm for that which was right. And through your power, they were able to go through the flames, to die a testimony to you. Lord, we ask that you will help us to be firm in our resolve, to stand firmly for the Word of God, as we face the future and the winds that are pushing against God's Word. Help us to lift up the Word of God, the written Word of God, which represents Jesus, the living Word. Thank you for hearing us in this prayer. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.